Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we will be talking about a disturbance that is located over in the eastern Pacific with a very high chance of development that could cross over into the Atlantic Basin. So we'll be taking a look at what the models are showing and the possibility of this becoming something very major, which is getting more likely. And we're also going to be taking a look at NOAA's prediction for this hurricane season. So in case you're not aware, uh, yesterday NOAA released their prediction for the season. And they are calling for a very active season. So we'll be taking a look at all of this. And before I go into details... Alright, and so let us start off with NOAA's prediction for this hurricane season. And so they're expecting that there is going to be an above normal hurricane season with a 65% chance of that happening. And the numbers they're expecting are 14 to 21 named storms off, which 6 to 10 could become hurricanes, and 3 to 6 major hurricanes. And in case you're not aware, a major hurricane is basically a category 3 or higher on the Saphir Simpson wind scale. So another year of above normal activity that is expected and it is all due to that La Nina that is well on its way in the eastern Pacific and so uh, when a La Nina is there of course we have more favorable conditions in the Atlantic for us to see uh, more tropical cyclone development and so that is what's going to be happening this year yet again and so the best case scenario in terms of these numbers would be 14 storms, 6 hurricanes and 3 majors however the worst case scenario is 21 named storms, 10 hurricanes and 6 major hurricanes and so guys if you're in regions that are usually affected during the hurricane season I'm talking about the Caribbean, uh, the Gulf Coast, Central America, the East Coast. Please take all the necessary precautions and stay safe because we're in for yet another round of storms. And so now let's go ahead and journey over into the Pacific Basin. Let's talk about that system that is likely to develop. So here we are taking a look at the National Hurricane Center's five-day graphical tropical weather outlook and we have two disturbances over there. So that one there highlighted, highlighted in yellow has a 20% chance of becoming something. Maybe in the next day or two we might see a little bit more organization but that chance is quite low. That's not our focus area guys. What is our focus area is to the right of that system. So we're seeing that that system there is highlighted in red and that indicates that the chance is high and so there is an 80% chance of us seeing uh, this thing here developing into a tropical cyclone. And it is likely that we will see this intensifying maybe into a tropical depression by the end of this week. And so it is currently to the south of the Gulf of Tehuantepec. So, uh, so Mexico should be on alert because this thing here is likely to curve and then probably travel into the Gulf of Mexico or maybe even into the Caribbean based on what the models are suggesting. So if you're in portions of southern Mexico, please be on alert. This thing here could really intensify into something very major. I mean, GFS is showing a very major hurricane making landfall. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what the model is expecting. And so we are focusing over to the bottom left side of your screen that is over in the eastern Pacific Basin and you're looking where those black lines are and all of those colors. So the, uh, those black lines are isobars and they are lines of equal pressure. And when you see them being closed and tightly packed together, that indicates that we have a steep gradient and thus a very strong system. And so this is by Saturday of this week on the 28th of the month. And we are seeing that we have a tropical storm over there showing a pressure of what? about 998 millibars right there and then as we head to Sunday though we see some crazy intensification with this so GFS is expecting that by Sunday this minimum pressure is going to be 950 millibars that is a definite major hurricane intensifying uh, in the eastern Pacific and then it starts to make that curve to the north by Monday or probably before that on the 30th of the month second to final day of the month and we see that the pressure has dropped even more to 938 millibars and then this thing here is going to make landfall and take a look at this by Tuesday GFS is showing that this is going to just become nothing because once it makes landfall all those mountains and the land area on a whole is going to interfere with the system remember tropical cyclones need warm moist conditions in order to intensify and so it will be cut off from all that resulting in abrupt weakening of the system but that rainfall threat is still going to be there and we see that that moisture is still lingering around 
Mexico. So that is where something interesting is likely to happen over in the Atlantic Basin. So let us go ahead and take a look at Wednesday on the 1st of June. And so we are seeing that there is a low pressure system forming in the Bay of Campeche. And we also have some moisture in portions of the Western Caribbean, just in the vicinity of the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize. And just to point out something else, the model is also showing that something is going to be developing uh, well off the southeast coast of the U.S. by the 1st of June interesting so here we see the 1007 millibar low pressure system up there and then as we head to thursday of next week on the second of the month we are seeing that uh we have all that moisture now making its way apparently to the northeast in the caribbean coming from where we would have had that major hurricane in central america so gfs is not expecting that it's going to be developing in the gulf but rather making its way over into the northwestern caribbean and re-intensifying but not as strong as previous Previously shown in the eastern Pacific, whereas that low pressure system is just off the coast of North Carolina as 1000 millibar low, and that is a tropical storm right there. We see that it is pretty small and compact, and we typically see storms make that track in the month of June. Sometimes they will form in the vicinity of the Atlantic, just off the US East Coast, and make their way up there, but not as very strong systems. But then uh, GFS is also, also showing that we will have a lot of activity, maybe a lot of rainfall taking place in portions of the North Caribbean as well as the Bahamas area right there and we're not seeing that we have uh, a lot of closed isobars packed together and that is because of all the land interaction and maybe other factors but as the system makes its way over Cuba and into the vicinity of the Bahamas we start to see more of organization with this uh, 999 millibars but eventually that thing is going to be making its way out. So that is quite a bit that the GFS is showing. So overall, GFS is expecting a major hurricane developing in uh, the Eastern Pacific, making its way over into Mexico and then uh, lingering around in portions of the Northwestern Caribbean as maybe a tropical storm or so, and then making its way out into the Atlantic. And so, uh, as I said earlier, if guys, if you're in Mexico, definitely keep an eye on this. This is likely to be something very major in your region. So. Uh, uh, let's take a look at what the other models are suggesting. So Euro doesn't go as far out as the GFS. So the end of this model run is on Sunday, May 29th. And uh, we're seeing that G uh, Euro is definitely showing that we will have a tropical cyclone there, but maybe not as strong as what the GFS is showing. Icon goes as far out to Monday, and it is definitely showing that uh, hurricane about to make landfall into Mexico. So Icon is somewhat agreeing that this thing here is definitely going to be uh, making its way up into Mexico. Mexico and probably over into the Gulf. Whereas CMC is green somewhat so it is showing that we will have maybe a weak hurricane making landfall in Mexico and then making its way over into the Gulf. So instead of the Caribbean, uh, CMC is showing that this system here is going to be in the Gulf of Mexico and intensifying. So by the 3rd of June on next Friday, it is showing that we will have a tropical storm over in the Gulf. So that is what our various models are showing. And so this thing here is not yet designated as an invest, but it will most likely be, uh, especially as we're going to be heading closer to the end of this week where, we're, where we are expecting that... Uh, it is likely to become a depression. And so in terms of these sea surface temperatures, sea surface temperatures in the Pacific are crazy. So GFS was showing some major intensification with the system here. And I certainly would not be surprised if it actually does that. Uh, keeping that the wind shear is favorable and there is a moist environment around because 31 degrees Celsius, that is screaming rapid intensification of the system. But hopefully things turn out for the best, but it is likely that we will definitely see a tropical cyclone over in the Eastern Pacific. And so the first name on their list is Agatha. And so... Maybe this will be Agatha and then if it does dissipate and make its way over into the either the Gulf or the Caribbean and then re-intensify, then it would be Alex. So it would achieve a name from the uh, list that is designated to this hurricane season and so guys that is really it for this update and so if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and of course you can share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be otherwise and i will keep you updated as time goes by